Hello and welcome to another edition of the Archery Shack Shop Talk. I'm Jeremy. I'm TJ. And we're here for number 44. Yep. We, uh, we've we been really busy. Yeah, wide open. We missed a live feed and a video or two, but we're back. We weren't going nowhere. We're just trying to get a... Uh, we don't want to tell people we're going to have stuff ready and not have it ready, I guess is what it boils down to. But yeah. uh, anyway, we're back. Don't... Don't freak. I got a bunch of messages Thursday night when we didn't go live. Yeah, me and too. And I was like, just calm down. We're <laughs> going to miss a week here probably, but it'll be all right. <clears throat> but uh, we've been talking. We got some big things coming up for our one-year podcast anniversary. We'll talk about in a little while, so that'll be cool. As always, if you need a bowstring, check out archeryshackstrings.com and use the code PODCAST15 to get 15% off your string sets. We... uh because of this virus, I guess, it kicked our busy season up a notch way before it normally would have hit. Yeah. So we've been cranking strings out, lots and lots and lots of bows being dropped off, um, selling bows, working on bows, arrows out the wazoo. So that's a good thing. Yep. But uh, let us know. All our contact stuff's in the description. Let us know if we can do anything for you. That's right. But... um so let's talk about our one year where what this will make it what about eight weeks seven weeks whatever away from our one year yeah. podcast anniversary and we were talking i'd love to give a compound bow away but I, it's not gonna happen <laughs> um because we yeah. have to buy it ourselves so uh I, we are going to give away a recurve bow mm -hmm. um it'll probably be a samic sage uh it's either going to be a samic sage or we have previously sold the um uh omp oh it not omp uh, no um i don't know why i can't think of it i'm drawing a blank it's made by the same people on omp but uh anyway they're similar bows either way we're gonna go with one of those two we'll have more specifics um as it up. gets closer but it'll, it'll probably be a deal to where we'll go live on a saturday evening for our one year deal and you'll have to tune in to win it and all that. Because I thought about putting like a box on the website and all that stuff, but that just makes it complicated. And it'd be nice if whoever won it was was here on with us. So yeah, <clears throat> we'll uh, as we get closer, we'll be consistently announcing the exact date and time and all that, and we'll get all that figured out here in the next podcast or two. So plenty of time to worry about that. But and we may do some smaller giveaways like t-shirts and that's koozies and that sort of thing maybe we can do multiple giveaways but the uh like i said i'd love to give away like a high-end bow but um without any super connections that can, <laughs> yeah. that can hook us up real good that's probably not gonna happen but yeah. maybe in the future so stand by yeah we'll see what we can come up with we've had uh this year, and y'all, we've talked about it before, has been so wild because usually from late spring until after the 4th is our dead time. Everybody's getting out of school, going on vacation, not really thinking a whole lot about bow hunting. This year with this virus, I guess everybody's been sitting at home thinking about bow hunting. And we, when, when all this started, what, about late March, I guess? Uh, let's see. Y'all went to the beach for y'all's anniversary, which is probably the first second week of march i think mm -hmm. uh so yeah probably late march and that's right when we were like there's a sudden uptick of <laughs> bow work and sales happened and we were like hmm. man uh it hadn't slowed down no it ain't so we it's been interesting yeah but we're getting there i think this is the first time that we've had to tell people three weeks out on yeah. retunes and restrings. Yeah, we've never done that before. Never. Normally, we are right at two weeks, and we stay or at two weeks, even through our busy, busiest. Yeah. And then the non-busy, we're like a week at the most. But yes. it's been crazy. And yeah. I hate I hate doing that, but it's just the way it is. Yeah. But um, if you're watching, I'm curious to know if you use a local shop, what's their turnaround time on stuff? You know, are they... We, uh, the, the guy closest to us, I mean, he's, <laughs> he was in the past years was telling people three months, three months. And of course they'd just tell him to go F himself and they'd come yeah. out here. But, um, I don't think that's the norm, but I think maybe a week or two is probably the norm. 
and at Bucks and Bass, you know, it, with the volume we did, it still wasn't but a couple of weeks at the worst. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I think we were three. We were about a month out at one point in time. Yeah. We just had so many people. We'd have like six or seven people helping back there. Now half of them didn't know what was going on, but we had some some help. Well, let's let's rephrase that a little bit. At Bucks and Bass, we didn't do the volume of strings that we do now because basically we would order, what was it, the Tiger Twist and the Zebras? We kept the Zebra strings on the wall. We still made a, a good, I guess I was mainly the only one making them, but I still made a good many, but it was nothing like what we're doing now. No. Um, but, if you know, if a boat come in close to what we had on the wall i mean we had a good quantity on the wall yeah we, we did we, we could twist or untwist a little bit and make it work back then but yeah but yeah now we wouldn't doing you know we wasn't doing the volume that yeah. we're doing now but uh it's something else yeah let me get our our earphones just went out this thing's finicky there it goes right, we got <laughs> it don't affect what y'all hear but it affects what we hear but yeah. uh so yeah, things have changed. I just I've always wondered back in those days if the internet would have been as big as it, then as it is now, how things would have been different. But I think that was one of the reasons for our success. We had so many bows and stuff on the wall. Nobody within several hours driving time had that amount of inventory. Yeah. And I think that's just what I mean. I remember people coming from Florida and Alabama and buying bows because we had them they could touch them they could shoot them you know all the models all the different everythings but uh now with the internet it's just so much different I'm, i mean i'm not saying i still think inventory is important but i think you can kind of get screwed people come in and shoot everything and then say oh it's 12 dollars cheaper on amazon i'm gonna buy it off amazon yeah which they don't tell you that but you know it happens but oh yeah the uh the internet well that's like the I can't I can never think of their name but I won't mention names. They came in when we got our uh, demo bows in from Prime our preview pack, and they shot the one the three and the five, and you know they were like okay all we're doing is waiting on the VXRs to come in we're gonna go shoot them but you know we're probably gonna end up buying Primes yeah well, you know that's fine you know. Uh, didn't hear from him for a little bit and the one guy he called or he sent us a message needing some air so we got him some airs and he's like man he said I hate it he said but we bought VXRs I'm like hey man it's whatever feels good to you or shoots good to you it, you know it's, mm -hmm. it doesn't bother me I guess yeah but it was funny they had to wait like they ordered theirs in, uh, let's see, late March, early April, and got them probably about two or three weeks ago now. Mm. And they let the guy who they bought them from, he said, we kind of felt bad, so we just let him set them up. But, and they turned around and come straight out here to us for us to set them up and everything. So, you know, and I know a lot of shops, I mean, you'll see it on Facebook or anything, a lot of shops get mad if they have a certain bow brand or whatnot, they come shoot the bow there and then turn around and go somewhere else to buy it because it's like two dollars, anywhere between two to ten bucks cheaper. And a lot of shops get mad and won't work on stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I I don't know. I think a lot of shops get mad about stupid shit, but uh, at the same time, I mean, I understand you got a lot of money hanging in your shop. And you you know somebody goes and buys it cheaper but i don't know i think it, there's a bunch of stuff behind the scenes there oh yeah but um i'm just trying to think of a good story about it but i without mentioning shop names it's gonna be hard to come up with one well you know mm -hmm. uh a rip I guess got let go from a bow company and pretty much if anybody once we, once I tell this most people can figure it out but a company let go of one rep everybody loved this rep and they moved another rep in from another part of the country <clears throat> and 
I think the guy had put, I can't remember how many staff shooters for this bow company. Mm. And so when the new guy, come, new rep come in, I think he cut just about everybody except for like, what, maybe 15? I heard he cut like 150, I think is yeah, what it was. Yeah. And so uh, the staff shooters were giving the shops that carry this bow brand a hard time because technically the staff shooters was getting all these bows at cost at cost and selling them, and selling them out of their garage or something like that so pretty mm. much undercutting the shops yeah well that rep again not mentioning companies but he made me so mad i remember the maddest i got was we'd ordered our 20 or thirty thousand dollars which is a measly order for in the big scheme of things of yeah. bows that year from him and uh anyway a guy come in shot one of the boat new bows that year Hadn't heard from him in about a month. Comes in with that exact bow with the tags on it. I still got several hanging on the wall. And, you know, like I say, I don't I don't really get mad. Maybe I just am missing that gene of, you know, if he bought it somewhere else, he bought it somewhere else. I mean, we'll obviously charge him to set it up, but yeah, that's fine. But anyway, but I did kind of get pissed on this one because he was like, yeah, the, the rep sold me this. It was a demo bow. He said it never even been out of the box. And I said, what would you pay for it? And it was like a third of, of retail, like way under what I even paid for it, you know. And I was like, this is a crock. And that's kind of when we not we didn't part ways. We really hadn't parted ways with anybody, but we just kind of said, oh, maybe we need to go a different direction. But Well, we just backed off. and Now there's been a lot of changing. But yeah, let's talk about, speaking of changing. Oh, yeah. Martin bought out Obsession. I don't know. I don't know. I'll be curious to know the... We'll know more next week, probably. Yeah. Because <clears throat> from just me reading the comments on it, they're going to still operate as two entities. But to me, that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense long term. Like, why would you not just manufacture everything under one roof? Or maybe, who knows how they're going to do it. But it looked like Dennis Lewis is still going to be involved with Obsession so I don't know how that works or I just know they announced it and said Martin bought them you know I don't know if that means there'll be the money behind them uh, or if that just means I don't know what it means but or Martin put some money in towards it and yeah maybe Dennis still owns the majority I, I ain't a hundred percent but Dennis commented and said they were rehiring a lot of their people so that tells me they're gonna still be making bows in Georgia yeah so i mean maybe i don't know after the martin factory burned i don't know exactly their arrangements of where all their stuff's made i think it's up north somewhere now but um i'm not a hundred percent i think they still make recurves out of walla walla but so maybe they'll get made in georgia i don't know but anyway it'll be curious to see in the next few weeks what unfolds with that yeah um hoyt released a middle of the road bow i don't remember the name of it but torx that sounds right it, it looked neat. It looked neat. And it was a good price. Yeah. Um, what else has happened? PSC announced that they wasn't releasing their their lineup till ATA. ATA. And they had a factory fire. <clears throat> yeah. That affected their carbon bow building. And that's being fixed, I guess. I don't yeah. Think no, I don't think nobody was hurt. I don't think so either. But I know that it's going to put them carbon uh, NXT or ntn bows a little bit further backed out now let me think <clears throat> there's so much stuff that happened in about a week all that i think we'll this will be a good thing and maybe make for a good ata video it looks like a lot of the bow companies are going to be releasing at the show this year because the covid put them behind on designs and all that stuff so maybe we could get back to the old days of ATA stuff this year. I hope, but uh, and I hope they keep it that way. You know what I mean? Don't release them at ATA this year, and then October rolls and roll them out again. But I'd love for all of them to get together and say, "All right, since most of them's doing it, we're all just going to wait till ATA." I don't know though, because I can see where this is going to be PSE. Because you know PSE is always the very first one, especially on their tournament lineup. Mm -hmm. You know, the ASA Classic. And then, what is it, late September, 1st of October, their hunting line comes out. 
Usually October 1st, and then Bear is right there with them. Bear's right there with them, and then most of the time, Hoyt and Matthew. Hoyt's normally around Halloween, 1st of November. Matthew's is like second week of November. Yeah. So I could see that maybe some of these companies will still keep an early release date just to see. Who knows? You know, if you take one, like... If PSE is always the first one to release, well, then now you've got Bear could be the first one to release at their regular re- release date. Then you got Hoyt and Matthew. So in a marketing scheme. Yeah, you want to be first? You want to be first. We'll see. I don't know what like, would have happened. I wonder with accessories in general or for archery, is everybody kind of behind because of the COVID, which I don't know what all, other than the few people we deal with, I don't know what uh, factories and stuff got screwed, you know. I don't either. But, because, like, I was kind of wor- wondering about Spot Hog, but they called our normal orders have come in from Spot Hog. Mm-hmm. We've been fine. Um, Prime got a little bit of a mess there, but now they're back to normal for the most part. I think Bear's the same way. Yeah. Well, I think they are a little bit behind in production, but I could be wrong. That's been a couple weeks back now. But. Hopefully all this don't start back up this fall and they start closing stuff down, <clears throat> but interesting times. Yeah. Interesting times. Well, ASA had their first shoot. ASA, at, we watched it a while ago. Yep, at uh, London, Kentucky. It was good to see some bow shooting going on. They announced that well, Alabama wasn't going, wherever they were going to be on the base in Alabama. <clears throat> Fort Benning, I think. Wasn't going to let them have the shoot there or was – the restrictions were too crazy, so they're moving the classic to back to uh, Foley, Foley, Alabama, which is on the coast. Yeah, and it's going to be in August, and that's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds. Yeah, especially with the hotels. I mean, you got to—I can imagine trying to book a hotel and everybody's done mm-hmm. already there for the beach. Yeah, now they're trying to throw an archery tournament in. Yeah, uh, IBO was what last weekend. Yeah, so that was good. I didn't. I'm I'm getting bad about it, but I didn't keep up with IBO. I couldn't tell you who won, who did what. I couldn't tell you. The um, locally, we got about three shoots, and then that's it. Yep. Um, club that we call you probably seen on our videos. Tab they got one coming up in a couple of weeks, and then right after that, Kiwi Bowman has got one, and then Kiwi always has the last one. They call it the Bow Hunter Jamboree. It's all deer targets, just to kind of get you ready for the season. And it's in August, so at least we got, and the only thing for us is, I don't know where you live at, but it is, now it's in the 90s, it's humid, very humid, yeah. it's hot, so I wouldn't mind going to shoot a time or two, just because we really hadn't shot it all this year. No, um, we ain't. Just to do it, but definitely need to go early, because we'll be sweating to death. But... uh I don't know. Maybe it'll get everybody enthused for next year. We keep talking about we got to have a shoot at the shop, but it honestly has been so busy. Um, when we have shoots, we love having shoots. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. I don't want to sound like I hate doing them, but uh, pretty much that whole day is shot because we have yeah. to deal with people coming in to pay to shoot and make sure everybody's being safe and you know try to speak to people and all that type of thing. And I always, always go out there and video some stuff, but. And we try to shoot ourselves, but sometimes we don't get to. Yeah. Um, but anyway, as busy as it's been, I've kind of hated to take us away for a day to do that. But we'll, I'm sure we'll have at least one or two here by hunting season. We normally have a – we used to have a really big shindig right before hunting season, like two weeks mm-hmm. before it started. And we've got mixed results. Like one year we had – a lot of people i mean 50 60 people come rolling in and i you know just for that one evening of shooting and i was like wow and then one year it was sort of a flop yeah and i think maybe i was i think uh i think we had it the same weekend that uh georgia opened up yeah that's something like that and then we've played with it we've had food we've done this we've done that sometimes the food's a good idea sometimes it's not but we do like a nighttime shoot that usually ends up being neat Mm -hmm. but I guess we need to. We even talked about that. We need to figure out to what degree we're doing that this year. But uh, 
and then probably one of our best shoots of the year is the one we do in october yeah. around high, our uh, pumpkin shoot it's the one if you've watched our videos we put out we wait till it gets dark we put out like five 3d targets that can be shot from under our front uh porch over, yeah porch here so there's a light under there so you can see your your bow or whatever but you can't see the target so we put these can lights at the targets and randomly they'll light up for i forget how many sec five or six seconds yeah uh, what is it? Three shots, lights up for five or six seconds, close, back off for six seconds, back on. You don't know which one's going to light up. You don't know the yardages. It just it's fun. You know what I mean? It's kind of like old old pop up. Mm -hmm. It's that it don't they don't pop up. We just flip a switch for a light. Uh, I think we do. I actually think it's three seconds to shoot and five seconds to, to reload. reload. Yeah, that sounds right. But yeah, that's always a good one. I need to pump it up better this year. But uh, we used to have a monthly we did. shoot, and that was a fun. But that was before we we had the as much stuff as we're doing now. But and we'd try to do some little theme each month. Like I remember <clears throat> we did a uh, a reindeer shoot or whatever <laughs> at Christmas, and we we got the golf cart and added like it was a sleigh and went down some of the lanes and i think we passed like seven or eight shooting lanes and you had to shoot at least three of the animals and then we tabulated the score it was just neat and then we did the turkey uh, shoot yeah the turkey shoot we've changed it around a little bit we've done the when we do the pumpkin shoot we'll put out like a real pumpkin with yeah. rings on it but we'll take the the insides out and put foam in it so it'll stop the arrow it's always neat we got undead fred that hangs from a tree down there yeah but uh I like doing that stuff. It just takes a lot of time and energy. Yep. So I'm just trying to think. Uh, maybe we just need help. <laughs> <laughs> help. Yeah. But you know, I mean, and for people who don't haven't never helped set up a shoot, oh, well, it's a pain in the ass. It, it it really is a pain in the butt. I mean, putting a target in which I mean we've got it simple. We put them all in the back of the truck and just yeah. But and, you, you gotta you know rebar is what holds them up you got to drive your rebar in get your targets up get your stakes out for whatever classes make sure the lanes are clear put we usually put water out halfway through to make sure nobody's going to die yeah and then uh make sure there's nothing behind there that's going to get shot or killed and yeah and then on the day of is you got to make sure you know walk around make sure everybody's kind of being safe for example of not being safe we had a fella this was like the first year we were out here and uh, the best I can figure is some redneck found an arrow and just shot it into the air. Now, if you look behind and beside the shop, it's just woods and a, there's a pond down back. It looks like there's nothing around us. But anyway, a neighbor, I mean, this neighbor's, shoot, you got to go a couple roads over to get there. But through the woods, you know, probably 200, 300 yards, probably further than that. But anyway, an arrow ends up in their yard and they're old codgers and they come over here raising hell talking about we could have shot their house and all this of course we apologize but also told them you know there's neighbors around here that shoot bows too that could have possibly you know it, it it probably was from here but yeah you got no way to prove it <clears throat> and uh so anyway pretty much my uh thesis was some redneck found an arrow down there in the woods while they were shooting and said hey I'll watch this and fired it in the air and it ended up in these old people's yard and that yeah. didn't turn out well so Stuff like that can't happen, and we try to monitor what's going on. But uh, well, and I mean, most people now that ever since that incident, you know, have common sense. Yeah. So it ain't as people, bad as it used to be. Uh, common sense. That could be a whole podcast. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, we've had and an accident mikey johnson an, <laughs> oh, Mike. an accident's an accident he was one time we had a shoot out here and he was drawing back and accidentally hit his his thumb button and it did shoot it up into outer space and it did you know who knows where that arrow went but that's an accident yeah he wasn't meaning he was nervous yeah and i remember vanessa being what like eight months pregnant mm -hmm. at that point yep. or, yeah and we'll never forget as long as i live he went to sky draw and all of a sudden he gets about almost and you hear thong. and everybody there was that day at that time 30 I, or 40 I people say 30 40 out there in that field and everybody turned and looked at him and i remember it was like that arrow was in slow motion 
and you couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> and I, I remember, but in my laugh, I thought, oh, Lord, I hope this don't end up in a house somewhere. Yeah. But uh, anyway, it was fine. It was fine. I'm just trying to. I was at a 3D shoot one time at an un, undisclosed location, and this other shooter decided it would be cool to shoot a duck out of this little creek. Oh, Lord. And I was thinking, what in the hell are you thinking? I mean, just common sense. Don't, it ain't, this ain't how this works, you know what I mean? And of course, he shot the duck. The duck went wild. It, it ended up killing it, I think. But that thing's flapping and flogging, and they just having a hell of a time. And I'm like, yeah, this looks great, people. But yeah. Anyway. Um, Don't do stupid stuff on 3D course. Just, mm, 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 mm. Which, we probably need to tell that story before we get off here. <laughs> There's 50. <laughs> no, the recent one that we had no idea about until we did our live feed the other week. From oh, TAC last year. We, um... We went to the Total Archer Challenge in Tennessee last year, and one of the fellas with us, he um, got a little hot headed. He ran out of water. Was I guess that's what started it. He ran out of water. Well, there was a group in front of us taking their time, and uh, I mean they were slow, but he started hollering at them, "Hurry the hell up!" Blah 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 blah, and like it it took all of us. There was what five or six of us in the group. Yeah, we were all like, "Whoa, buddy, what is going on here?" So we were all you know embarrassed and kind of like what are you thinking hollering at them people like that well anyway we on the live feed i'm sure everybody's probably listening now but we get on the live feed and somebody was like we was that we was the two guys in front of you that you almost got our butts whooped yeah and we were like oh god and uh anyway yeah you had like a crazy person like this guy was with us kind of did that day and you never know who's watching well and it's also like this they paid their money just like we did. So, and that, and you know, well, I'm not trying to defend what he did by no means, but on the, a normal 3D course, we would jump in front of them and shoot, jump back, and then pass them. But on the on the attack, you know, you're looking at hundreds of yards between targets, so it's not that easy um, to just pass somebody. And they wasn't, but two of them in the group in front of you know in front of us. Yeah. So you know. If you've got two shooters and it was a fairly large group, which we had a fairly large group too, yeah. let the two, you know let the two guys roll through. through. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, so never would have thought that would have happened. That <laughs> <laughs> we were all just like, oh, oh God. lord. Anyway, we're, let's. Uh, our camera cuts off in a minute and twenty seconds. <laughs> For, oh, these cameras will record for twenty nine minutes and like fifty. Uh, nine seconds but we'll make this one short and sweet and get off here i know it's kind of been chatty but yeah. um thank y'all for watching we'll be unless something crazy happens on our live feed on thursday nights and you can tune in and watch those and we'll have more information about our giveaway coming up so thank you for watching and we'll see y'all next week see ya <laughs>